on us So God in you we trust And the whole world will see how glorious Is your mark, is your mark on us Is your mark, is your mark on us Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third night of Prophetess Kimberly Moses Revival. I am so excited to be before you all today. I am Minister Brittany, and I am going to be leading everyone into prayer tonight. So just go ahead and get your mind, body, and soul in a position to receive from the Holy Spirit. He is definitely um, going to be orchestrating this entire uh, evening. Also, I just want to say thank you to Prophetess Kimberly Moses for giving me the opportunity to come before her congregation today and to pray. So let us all bow our heads as we go before the Lord and just petition him to just simply have his way. So Father, we thank you, Lord, first of all, for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior today, Lord. Lord, as Lord, as we celebrate today his finished work, Lord, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for making a way for us to come back to you. We thank Thank you, Lord, for reconciling us, Lord, through the mighty matchless blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, we know that he is the firstborn from the dead. 
we know that he is alpha he's omega he's the beginning and the end and lord as we go before your throne tonight we go in his righteousness father we don't go in our own works or our own abilities but we go in the righteousness of jesus christ as you have instructed us in your word to put on christ so we put on christ tonight as we come before your throne father lord we thank you father for the opportunity to even pray lord we thank you for this tool and this gift that you have given us lord lord we thank you father right now for the blood we thank you lord for this congregation we thank you lord for this revival father i thank you lord for the souls that will watch the replay i thank you lord for the souls that are watching live right now lord lord we just want to give thanks before we ask for anything lord lord we want to say thank you lord for the breath in our chest lord we want to say thank you lord for the roof over our heads lord we just want to say thank you lord for doing exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think father and lord we invite your holy ghost into this place father lord you said in your word that when men know not what to pray that the holy ghost will make intercession oh father god we invite your presence into this place we invite the power of the holy ghost into this place tonight lord lord we're asking you father that you will provide healing deliverance father uh, uh, according to your will tonight lord lord as the prayer says let your kingdom come let your will be done tonight father lord we pray for your will tonight father not our own agendas lord we pray for your agenda what's on the roster in heaven tonight lord we ask you right now father Father, to let your will be revealed tonight. Lord, I pray over the speaker tonight. Lord, I ask that you put your grace on her lips, Father. Lord, that you put the word of deliverance in her belly. Lord, I ask that you stir her up right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, as she has opened herself unto you to be used tonight. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over her ministry. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over her, over her whole entire family, over her vehicle, over her jobs. Lord, I ask you, Lord, Lord, to let whatever she sets her hands to be blessed father lord i thank you lord for the life that you you have given her we thank you lord for the fire that you have put on the inside of her father lord i thank you lord for her ministry and the souls that she has touched lord lord and i ask that you will add to her father god everything that she's poured out trying to run this event father god i ask that you pour it back into her lord lord I ask that she will reap what she has not sold her. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. In the name of Jesus. I hear it one more time. Let her reap where she has not even sold her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, Lord, Lord, to bless those that will watch, Lord. Let them come in and pull on the anointing of Jesus Christ. It's not our anointing that's present tonight. It's the ancient of days that is present. So get your hearts ready to receive what God has put on the inside of this vessel. Lord, we also ask you to bless the minstrel tonight. Prophetess Gigi Love, we ask you, Lord, Lord, to, uh, to anoint her, Father God, afresh, Lord. Lord, I also ask that you will bless whatever she said her hands to father lord i plead the blood of jesus on everything connected to her in the mighty name of jesus lord lord i thank you lord for the prosperity that lingers over her life in the name of jesus father i thank you lord for the word that you have given her i thank you for lord for the oil that you have put in, in her lantern i thank you for it right now i thank you lord that the oil that you have given her will last for days and months and years to come, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to have your way tonight. In Jesus' mighty matchless name, let it be so. Amen and amen. <laughs> On to prophetess Gigi Love for worship. Hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Oh, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. Yes, joy is mine. Joy is mine. I know joy today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Oh, joy today is mine oh victory is mine victory is mine yes victory today is mine 
Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Yes, victory today is mine. Oh, oh, oh. How I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Yes, to me, it is so wonderful. To me, it is so wonderful. To me, it is so wonderful to know that Jesus is mine. Oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus, because he first loved me, yes, because he first loved me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We bless his name tonight. Come on, saints. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, thank you. Glory to God. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight, God. We exalt you tonight. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, God. We bless you. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just a reminder of what we are celebrating today. Glory to God. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord. Yes, you are Lord. You have risen from the dead and 
you are Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. You're in the hands of prophetess Kimberly Moses. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Amen. God is so good. Amen. We just thank God what he's doing. Amen. Come on, you guys. Amen. This night number three. Amen. Come on. Let's give God some. Come on. Praise. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. And give God praise and glory. Amen. The enemy tried to take some of us out. Amen. The enemy has tried to attack some of us in our bodies and our minds. In our finances, we can clap our hands and thank God for another day of life. Amen. This is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This is a, 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 there has been crazy attacks on the word resurrection. There has been attacks on believers worldwide. Amen. But we can thank God. Amen. For night number three. Come on, I just decree and declare in this atmosphere, amen, that the fire of God is being released right now. I don't know about you, but I feel his presence. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm in expectation, amen. I decree and declare over this atmosphere that the kingdom of heaven has come, amen. There's people on here, even tonight, I can see in the realm of the spirit, the first thing I see, uh, I'm looking at, look like pallops. I feel like somebody has some pallops in their nasal cavity, but I'm believing by the power of God that those nasal pallops in your no nose will just begin to dry up and die by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. And then another thing that the Lord has shown me on this broadcast tonight, amen. I'm seeing somebody, you have a hearing aid on, but the hearing aid is, is, is giving you problems. Maybe it's not tuned on the right frequency, amen. But I'm believing by the power of God that you're not going to even need the hearing aid anymore in the name of jesus amen and i'm seeing somebody right now you're coming on here with some knee pain amen and in your kneecaps it's it just it's just hurting and you're saying god i don't know my knees are not feeling the best i have pain in my knees and i'm believing by the spirit of god for healing in your knees in the name of jesus amen but jesus christ is lord come on we take authority over this atmosphere amen see some people are coming on here depressed and weighed down some people are coming on here just feeling some kind of way but we're going to believe by the spirit of God tonight that there's a word from the throne amen it's a word from the throne about your circumstance there's a word from God amen we're going to believe that we're going to believe our God amen for a word of turnaround for a word of breakthrough for a word of refreshing amen see this is a three night third night amen a revival and the word revival means to restore to bring back to revive amen some of us we're just going through the motions some of how many of you guys on here maybe you've been walking with god for a while but you need a little refreshing maybe some of you guys been walking with god for a while but you're feeling bored you're feeling overwhelmed you're feeling like the cares of this world has got the just on your shoulder amen we're gonna believe god to revive you to quicken you because come on point to yourself and be it begin to prophesy say i got work to do for the father come on make it personal i got work to do for the father amen some of you guys right now on the broadcast the enemy has tried to attack you in your body this week alone my god the enemy tried to attack your family maybe your finances Maybe your mental capacity, but the devil is defeated. Amen. I decree and declare over your life tonight. You're going to be set free in Jesus name. Amen. I don't even got to lay hands on you. Amen. I, I decree and declare that God's glory is going to fall upon you afresh. Amen. I decree open heaven over upon everybody underneath the sound of my voice that God's fire is just going to come down and saturate you. Amen. If you start to feel God's fire, you feel God's presence in this fire. Just put some fire emojis on here. I don't know about you, but I'm sweating already. Like I'm I, like, I just done worked out like I ran like 10 laps, amen, because of his fire, amen. And God says, For two or three are gathered, his he's in the midst, amen. And he's a God that answers by fire, and he's an all consuming fire. So, God, we thank you that your fire is loose on this broadcast in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God is going to turn some things around. Don't, don't you guys believe that, amen? 
He's going to turn some things around. God's not going to leave us stuck and, and, and high and dry. Amen. He's about to turn some things around. Come on and begin to prophesy over yourself and say, God's going to turn some things around for me. Amen. So I'm going to be obedient and do what the Lord told me to do. Amen. This is what this whole event is about. Amen. Some of us are busy and many, many of you guys, if you know me, you know that I'm busy. Amen. And I'm not saying this to boast on Kim, but I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. And doing an event or coming on here every night is a sacrifice for me. Amen. But I'm doing what God told me to do. And how many know that God is going to bless you? because of your obedience. Amen. Somebody, you obey God when it wasn't convenient. You obey God when it was out of your comfort zone and just get ready for blessing. I want to prophesy consecutive blessings upon your life. Somebody right now, you gave something. Maybe you gave a seed that wasn't, uh, you know, that, that hurts you a little bit. Like, ouch, God. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was like the widow giving her last two mites. Uh, don't you know there's a blessing coming to you? Amen. Some of you guys, you have done things that God told you to do and it was outside of your comfort zone. I just want to prophesy to somebody. Just get Get ready for the overflow. Can I prophesy that in your life tonight? Just get ready for the overflow. So this right here for me is my overflow. Amen. This is something that God would have me to do that's out of my comfort zone. Like, God, you know, I, I'm doing multiple jobs. I was talking to one of my friends tonight, and she was like, woman of God, you're doing so much. Um, you, She's like, you you like you got this business, that business, that business. Amen. But I got to be obedient. Amen. Listen, it doesn't matter what we got going on. When God says stop, and when God says you got to do this thing and roll up your sleeves, somebody, come on, somebody, just roll up your sleeves symbolically. I don't have no sleeves on tonight, but just begin to roll up symbolically. Amen. And begin to put your hands like you plow on something. Amen. See, some of us, we got to stop and begin to plow. Amen. Begin to dig because God is saying tonight that you're breaking up fallow ground. Amen. See, there's some obstacles that the enemy has tried to put before a lot of us, but I decree and declare we're breaking up that fallow ground. Amen. We're coming to the, the breakthrough. We're coming to the harvest land. Amen. We're coming and getting what God has for us in Jesus name. So whenever God tells you to do something, listen to me, hear me by the word of the spirit. Cause I'm, I'm not even trying to say this. This is the Holy spirit is saying through me. Whenever he tells you to do something that's an uh, in inconvenience to you. Amen. Amen. And, and God is trying to get something to you and use you and get something through you so you can get to the other side so you can get to the land of harvest so you can get to your promised land amen so you can get to the land flowing with milk and honey see some of you guys how many of you guys have been just in incon uh, inconvenience in the season Let's be honest. How many of you guys, we can just be honest, we're outside of our comfort zone. Maybe maybe God is stretching you. Maybe God is in, in enlarging your territory. Maybe God is entrusting you and in, in, in birthing out new things and new gifts and just loosening a fresh anointing upon you. Amen. Come on. It don't always happen when it's when you're comfortable. Sometimes you got to get uncomfortable for these gifts, amen, to, to come into fruition. Sometimes you got to get uncomfortable. The Bible says unless the corner of uh, a corn uh, uh, falls to the ground or a germ of wheat to the ground and die it, 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 it's not going to produce fruit it has to some of us are in that season of dying to self so god can just begin to just begin to uh show up in such a dynamic way amen as never before in jesus name so let me tell you this so i'm up here praying and I'm like, God, okay, what's what's going on? Just talking to the Holy Spirit, because how many of you guys know that the Holy Spirit, come on, he will never leave us or forsake us. Somebody lift your hands today. Somebody right now, you're feeling lonely. Maybe your man ain't acting right at the house. Oh, my God. You know, maybe uh, you, you had a friend that was nothing but a Judas and backstab you. And you're like, wow. But And let me say this. We have a friend in Jesus. Uh, so I was talking to my friend. See, many times I had fake friends. How many of you guys know about the fake friends? I had friends that were just of me and I'm like what you jealous for you know what I'm going through you know I have one so-called friend she knew that I stayed in an apartment full of uh, mice and ants and all the kind of crazy stuff and uh it looked like section eight I had a pastor friend said what is this section eight the whole hallway smelled like weed and I was like, wow, no, he didn't say this about my place. But anyways, I had some fake friends that knew what I was going through. But they they, they began to see where God was taking me. Come on, somebody right now, you can relate to this. You have some people around you and you you, you saying like, why are they jealous of me? Why they don't like me? Because they can see where God is taking you. So I said, I had some fake friends. But then guess what? As you begin to grow in God, as God begin to mature you and do a work in you, you'll begin to see some fake friends fall off. Come on. But then you begin to see some real, the real friends stay around and one of the real friends that's staying around is jesus come on one of the real friends that's, that's not going nowhere is the holy ghost huh? in the name of jesus so i'm talking to my friend and the friend told me you got to talk about the power of your testimony 
See, the spirit of the Lord, he began, he began to deal with me about motives. See, uh, you don't see me post a lot. One of the reasons why I don't post a lot is because I'm busy. You know, and I, I laugh sometimes. You guys heard me say this so many times. I feel like I'm Moses, like in scripture. And it's funny that my last name is actually Moses because sometimes I work from sun up to actually sundown, like Moses did when he first got called into his ministry. But the Holy Spirit, he began to deal with me just to only come on when he say come on. But some of us, we're doing things to be seen by men. We're doing things to get applause by men. We're doing things to try to be famous. We're doing things to try to chase riches and money and wealth. But God is not in that. So God began to deal with me and talk about the power of a testimony. Some of us don't want to testify anymore. Some of us are ashamed to testify. Some of us, when we testify, it has nothing to do with Jesus. It has all about self, all about self-promotion, self-glorification, self-gratification. The devil is a liar. So the Lord just began to talk to me and tell me how much he was grieved by people posting all this stuff, but it had nothing to do with him. You see, listen, the Holy Spirit said when we post our testimony, amen, it should be to glorify God. It should be, and I'm, I'm going to take you into the scriptures in a minute. It should be to win souls unto God. Amen. See, God began to tell me, he said, my people, they're, 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 they're doing things and it has nothing to do with me. I'm not even invited in the room. I'm not even, uh, even invited on the platform. I'm not even invited. Uh, so he just began to be so grieved and so vexed by this. Uh, so listen, this is what the Lord told me, and I'm going to preach this, amen, however he gave it to me. So I want you to get your uh, Bibles out, John 4, and also I want us to also, if you have communion, let's get our communion out, amen. If you don't have a pre-cup, pre-communion cup, it's okay, just get some crackers and grape juice and set it to the side, because listen, I, I want to take communion as well tonight, amen, but listen to this. Amen. But he began to be so grieved. And, you know, have, have you ever felt the pain of God? Had an ounce or a glimpse of his pain? Oh, my. It don't feel good. Amen. I'm up here trying not to cry. I'm up here just feeling some kind of way like, wow, God, you, you, you this thing got you great. Have you ever had like a burden from God and you just had a well and a, just a, a, a deep belly cry? And because you got allow you to feel an ounce of his pain. Jesus. So listen to this. Some people are doing things for attention. Amen. God doesn't listen. It's, it's so bad right now. Can I can I just be honest? Can I be honest? It is so bad how much people want to get attention from man. Some people are posting things, not because they're inspired by the Holy Ghost, because they got inspired by what somebody else posted. They got they, they, and it's coming from a place of competition. It's coming from a place of, oh my God, I need to feel important. I, I need I need more likes. Uh, I need more followers. Uh, but but if God is not in it, then what are we doing? What are we doing? Hey Amen. Some of us are just doing these things just to be seen by man. But what about being seen by God? That does God know you uh, behind closed doors? Uh, when you shut, uh, come on, shut the door to your room. Uh, when you lift up your hands, uh, does heaven respond to your voice? When you begin to fall out uh, on your knees and just say, "Help me, Abba, Father, I am here. Your servant is here." Does heaven respond? Uh, do you feel the presence of God come into your room? Do you know how to get a hold of Jesus? in the come on in the private place uh, in the secret places god said what you do in private uh, he will reward you openly so do we know god in such an intimate way in that matter amen or we just care more about being popular to man let me tell you something about man amen and i, I had to go through the season and I'm, I'm gonna get to the sport so bear with me amen i'm just trying to lay the foundation see man will turn on you Amen. Man will turn on you. I had people say, that's my prophet. I love prophet is K and all this stuff. And guess what? They, the same people that's most vocal about me turn on me. Fake friends, right? Phony, phony people, right? They did the same thing to Christ. They love Jesus today and then they end up hating him tomorrow. They love him today and they end up saying crucify him. And they chose a murderer Barabbas over Jesus. People will turn on you. So we, we got to get out of trying to, you know, get applauses from people and trying to be seen by people so i'm going to go back and talk about the power of a testimony amen our testimony should be winning souls amen how many people saw your testimony and got convicted and they're like wow and they begin to repent and they begin to get hope and they begin to say if jesus saved her or saved him maybe he can save my daughter that's in fornication or a uh, uh, perversion or just that stripping down the pole if jesus saved her or him maybe he can save him or her or my child or my husband out of that 
Amen. There is power in the testimony. See, let me say this. See, the, God don't give us the spirit of shame. The enemy is trying to make people be shamed of where God has brought you from. The devil is a liar. Uh-uh, baby. Begin to shake off shame. Begin to shake off embarrassment. Amen. Because I want to talk to some people that have been through something. I want to talk to some people tonight. Amen. That say, you know, I'm not going to allow the devil to hold anything over my head ever again. I'm not going to allow the devil to hold anything over my head. Let me tell you something. This is real talk. Can I, can I be transparent? See, I used to be ashamed of my background. I used to be ashamed. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about John 4 today. We're going to talk about the woman at the well. I felt like the woman at the well, ashamed of my background. I don't even know how many people I slept with, to be honest. And I thank God I don't have no HIV and no STDs. I thank God. Amen. So let me say this. I felt like God, I have nothing good to offer. I have no, you, you want to call me? You want to use someone like me to preach, uh, to do your work? Amen. So I felt ashamed. So. I went through something with my children's father and he began to try to build a case against me and he began to have try to make video clips of me with my hair all out many people probably know that I got I got really thick hair and I don't like doing my hair every day amen he began to show my hair just just disheveled and he began to show me like me flipping out on him because he'll do something crazy like he was cheating on me I'm gonna be I'm gonna put it out here to help somebody amen so I, I flipped and so he would try to build a case up against me. So I remember, I never forget, we went to court and he began to tell the judge all of my background, like, oh, she was a stripper and all, oh, she slept with women and all and blah, 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 and all this and trying to use my past against me. But let me tell you something. How many of you know that when you start serving Jesus, uh, when you repent of your sins, uh, when you take off the old man, you put on the new man, amen? Uh, the old man has passed away, amen? See, this is Resurrection Sunday, amen? See, some of us, when we, when we got saved and we went down down to, to that water and got baptized, Amen. It was so uh, it was like the washing away of sins. Uh, you came up as a new man, a new creature in Christ. And don't let nobody hold anything over your head. That's right. Don't let nobody hold anything over your head. So that day forward, I asked God, I said, God, deliver me from shame. Deliver me from what people think about me. So I'm just transparent. I just put it out there. Amen. Because listen, that person that's trying to make you feel bad about what you did, they probably did the same thing. And how hypocritical was that? I never forget in like in, in high school. Like, can, I, can I be honest? In high school, I never forget this, these girls that didn't like me. They're trying to ruin my reputation. Talking about I'm sleeping around, but you sleeping around too. How hypocritical is that? That's how the devil do. The devil will try to make somebody ignore that, that log in their own eye and look at the speck in your own eye. How hypocritical is that? So let me tell you, say this. Don't let nobody hold anything over your head. Amen. There's power in your testimony. As I begin to testify, amen, people, uh, uh, listen, yes, God delivered me out, the, out of the strip club. Amen. You know how many strippers I've met since then? And I begin to tell them about Jesus and all they can do is weep. Amen. See, God wants to use your testimony. I break off shame. I break off embarrassment. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So there's power. Somebody said power. Amen. Power in your mouth. And the enemy has been so busy trying to cause some of us to be embarrassed and be muted. The devil is a liar. I bind up the deaf mute spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind up the deaf mute spirit in the name of Jesus. There's somebody on here. You hear in your mind. You hear the enemy trying to, you, it's like you hear dem demonic chatter in your mind. If that's you, just Take your hand, lay a hand on your forehead, and we come against demonic chatter in your mind. In the name of Jesus, I command your mind to line up with the word of God. You will be in your right mind in the name of Jesus. Uh, don't you know how much power? Come on, some, say power. There's power of the Holy Ghost inside of you. There's so much power. When you begin to get full of faith, and when you begin to open up your mouth and just begin to shout and begin to testify of God's goodness. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, let's look, let's look at the word testimony. The test the, the word testimony in the in the Greek word stands for maturin, maturin, maturin. When I look at that word, I see maturity. Amen. See, God wants us to grow up. God wants us to get off the milk and, and start eating this, the spiritual meat. Amen. And be mature. That word maturin means witness, <laughs> to bear witness. Amen. God wants to bear witness. God says between two or three. Amen. He begins to confirm or bear a witness. Amen. Somebody right now, you know when God is speaking because it's going to bear witness to you. Amen. You know when, when, when God has spoken something to you and God has sent maybe a prophet or one of his servants to begin to speak a word and you're like, wow, that's bearing witness with me. Amen. That's what the word testimony means. 
from the Greek word maturing. Amen. So our testimony is about God. Come on, somebody say that. My testimony is about God. It's not about us. Amen. It's about him. Amen. Yes, it's your story, but it's actually supposed to be for his glory, right? So let's let's go to the word today. And if um if I stop and I may prophesy, it's whatever the Holy Spirit wants. Sometimes I have a word of knowledge. Sometimes he'll give me a pro prophetic word. I'm just going to be open to what the Lord is saying. Amen. So listen, let's go to John chapter four and let's start at verse number three. Amen. So this is about our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We got to start preaching about Jesus. We got to start pointing people back to Christ Jesus. Amen. Listen, ne never should we go on here because we're hurting. And our whole sermon is about this, this is flesh. All it is, some of this stuff is just flesh. And you want to say it's God. Nah, baby, it didn't come from a place of God. It came from a place of flesh. Amen. But we need to get back to Christ-centered messages. Amen. And pointing people back to Christ. So let's look at John chapter 4. Let's go to start. So there verse 3. Jesus, he left Judea and he departed again for Galilee. Listen, Jesus was on the move. Amen. He was on the move. And he had to pass through Samaria. Amen. So let me start right there. Galilee was his destination, but he had to make a stop first. Amen. Some of you guys right now, let's let's be honest. How many of you guys right now, you are in a place that you said, God, this ain't it. This ain't what you have for me. But maybe you are like, you just got to make a stop first. Maybe you had to go here first. Maybe you had to experience some heartache first. Maybe you had to experience some hardship first. So when you get to your destination, you can be well equipped. You can have some life skills, some life experiences of what God brought you from. Amen. See, let me tell you something. Many of you guys, um, the woman of God talked about the oil. My God, the oil. Oh, my God. Some of you guys have to get some oil first along the way before, you know, you can get to your final destination. So I never forget. God told me to do certain assignments. And before I can even finish and get to the end of that assignment, I have to go and make some stops. Amen. So flesh is this. Flesh is anything contrary to the spirit of God. That's a great question, Flora. So let me say this. So Jesus, amen, he had to make a stop first. So let me say this. It's all strategic. It's all in the, in, in God's steps and the, God's orchestrated plans for your life. Because the Bible says the steps of a, a steps of God, the steps of a good man, a woman of God are ordered by the Lord. Amen. So don't complain. Some of us are complaining like, God, I don't know about this church. I don't know about this assignment. Amen. But it's strategic. God, see, Jesus had to go through Samaria. Amen. He was going to Galilee. I want you to catch this. And if you're catching this, Amen. Just, just say, I'm following you. Amen. So he had to stop in Samaria. Was Samaria his final stop? Somebody answer the question. Was Samaria his final destination? No. He was he was trying to get to Galilee, but he had to make a stop first. And I want you to catch that. Amen. See, sometimes it seems we talked about the inconvenience in the beginning. Sometimes it may seem like God, you know, he may inconvenience our plans and send us somewhere, but it could be for that one person, right? Could be for that one person. You know, the Bible says Jesus will leave the 99 sheep to go out after that one. Amen. So I want you guys to renew your mind today and, you know, just have a new perspective. Don't let the inconvenience cause you to get bitter, cause you to complain and mumber. Because we don't want to be like the children of the Israelites when they were out there in the wilderness season. I think it was like a, what, 11 day journey. It turned to a 40 year journey because they, they was mummering and complaining. Come on, somebody. So I'm going to have the right heart posture before God. Amen. God, I may not want to be. In the wilderness season, I mean, I want to be in the valley season, but I got to go through the valley to get to the mountaintop. Amen. I got to pass through the shadow of death. Amen. The things that's hard and the things that may feel like they're crushing me, the things that's coming against me. Good God, you said when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Amen. God is with you through the valley. It's just a valley place. Amen. But you're coming to see this is the thing about a valley. It's going to eventually rise up to higher ground. Amen. You're going to rise up to the mountaintop. Amen. You're going to rise up to the place uh, of victory in Jesus' name. And I love how the woman of God sung victory. So listen, let's go back to scripture. Amen. Let's go back to, let's read verse six. Continue on. Get your Bible out, please. I want everybody, amen, nobody should be looking at me. Let's get our Bible out. Let's look at the word of God, amen, for yourself. The Bible says, study the word unto God, amen, to yourself, amen, uh, for yourself, amen. A workman not uh, needed to be ashamed, but rightly divided in the word of truth. So let's look at verse six. And it says, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus was weary. He was weary from his journey. He was sitting beside the well. And it was about the sixth hour. So let me read that again. Jesus was weary from the journey. He was weary from the journey. And he was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. So I can say, 
a lot of things about that. Okay, so here's our Lord and Savior in his humanity. Mm -hmm. In his humanity. Listen to this. He's our high priest. The Bible says he's our high priest. And he understands everything we're going through, yet without sin. He he understands when you hurt, he hurts. When you get upset, guess what? Jesus, he 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 got upset one time. He flipped the over the, 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 the tables, the, the 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 merchants' tables, and he said, This is my father's house. You know, y'all making it a den of thieves, but it should be called a house of prayer, right? So Jesus, he listen, some of you guys are tired. You're tired from warfare, you're tired of the journey, you're tired. Jesus understands. Hear me. He understands. And he sat down beside the well. Somebody said, beside the well. I'm going somewhere. Amen. And it was about the sixth hour. It's about the sixth hour. Listen, what is that sixth hour? What does that mean? Somebody said it was noon. It was noon. You know why we pray at noon? Many people may not know, but we pray at noon. Monday through Friday, we pray at noon because, number one, God told me to do it at noon. But number two is something about the sixth hour. We hear um, the midnight hour, but don't you know God is a six-hour God as well? We know, like, we hear the scriptures, like, in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in my favor. You know the song. God's going to turn it around. We know those, those songs, right? Those old hymns, but in that sixth hour. The sixth hour. See, God can do some miracles at noon. He could do some in the midday. Amen. But something about the well. Jesus Christ is the living well. Amen. So <laughs> Jesus was showing us, okay, when you get tired, it's okay to rest. When you get tired, it's okay to stop. Amen. And listen to me. Some of us doing things in our own strength. I went, I went, I was doing something in my own strength one season. And don't you know the spirit of God rebuked me? Mm -hmm. He rebuked me. He said, Kimberly, you're doing things in your own strength. Amen. So I was feeling like I was about to burn out. That's the truth, you guys. The straight truth. And God began to sit me down. God began to pour into me. Amen. And it's okay to rest. It's okay mm -hmm, to have the spirit of the Lord pour back into you. Amen. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm going to delegate this assignment. How many of us have delegated something? How many of us say, you know what, I'm going to just take a week off and, and rest and, and get what I need from God because I cannot give you what I don't have. Amen. It's okay to say, you know what, God, refresh me and, you know, quicken me and pour into me so I could be better equipped and better, uh, uh, you know, just ready to pour out to, to, to your people. So we all need to rest. Even God rested on the what? The seventh day. God began to rest on the seventh day. Amen. As in Genesis chapter one, when he spoke the world into to creation, right? Into existence. He rested on the seventh day. So we see in our Lord and Savior, he began to rest. Amen. So God, he, how many of you guys, you can use some rest. How many of you guys, you know, uh, uh, you can say, God, whew, God, I need a season of rest because it's one thing after another thing after. Look, I've been through seasons where I went through so many attacks. I'm like, God, you got to come through because this is crazy, God. This is crazy. Like, if it wasn't my family, if it wasn't my relationship, if it wasn't my money, if it wasn't my body, which is something, it was something on my job, which is something, 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 something. I'm like, and I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. But don't you know, in your distress, God will give you rest. God will begin to begin to pour out. So listen, you know, when we get weary, God says, don't get weary. Uh, don't get tired. Don't get well doing. Amen. Come on, because your reaper harvest if you faint not. So when you get weary, don't faint. Don't faint. Amen. So let's go to verse seven. Verse number seven. So it, a woman came. Come on. A woman came from Samaria to draw some water. Come on. The woman came from Samaria. You follow me? Come on. Verse seven. Pick your Bible back up. Verse seven. Amen. Um, and to draw some water. And Jesus said, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And a Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans back then. So listen to this. Jesus cares about the rejects. He cares about the rejects. You know, the least is mighty in God's sight. How many of you guys felt rejected? Mm hmm. There was people. Some, some, can I be honest? You know, there's times in life nobody gave me a chance, but God gave me a chance. Amen. God is a God of multiple chances. Amen. Don't you thank God for chances after chance that God gave you an opportunity? God gave you a chance. Ooh, some of us, we got rejected because of how we looked. 
We got rejected because of our sex. We got reject rejected because of our age. We just got rejected. And people began to just come, you know, look down at us and be like, who are they? They, they ain't nobody. And blah. Mm. You better be careful who you look down on because, you know, the, the least is mighty in God's sight. You have to know that. Amen. See, 1 Corinthians 1 27 says, for God has chosen the foolish things of the wise, uh, 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 foolish things of the world to confine the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confine the mighty. Those that are mighty. Listen, ain't that so powerful? So here's Jesus talking to, you know, a, a Samaritan woman you know, or the least likely person. And, and, the, and, and his disciples probably thought it was foolish. Like, Jesus, you're talking to this woman? Like, who is she? Like, come on, what are you doing? You're wasting time, right? See, when God called you, when God anointed you, you know, it was, it was for a reason. It's not in vain. And the world may look down like, who are they? They're never going to be nobody. But listen, baby, amen. See, people have underestimated you, but they didn't realize the power. Come on, we're talking about the power of a testimony. They don't realize the power of a testimony is getting ready to come out your mouth and come out your belly. Amen. What God is getting ready to do through you and in you. Amen. So it's, 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 we got to be careful who we look down upon. So God loves the rejects. God loves to lose those people. Amen. How many of us, let's be honest, how many of us we got a crazy background? Uh-huh. I used to be the biggest fornicator, the, the liar. I, I, I cursed like a sailor. I remember I cursed my ex-boyfriend out. I cursed his mama out. My God, I, I can't even imagine cursing somebody mama out. You know, I, I always try to be respectable now because God did God did the work. I'll say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. But I'm cursing his mama. I'm thinking like, wow, God, you, you, <laughs> you, you, you did a work, Lord. And God does the work. How many of us, you know, we, we, we thank God, you know, we did some crazy things. You know, I had guns pulled out on me. I said, rob dudes. And, you know, I had two guys, you know, pull guns out on me. Just crazy. I thank God I'm here. I'm serious. You know, um, I used to key cars and slash tires and all kind of crazy stuff. Right. And, and I'm like, God, you want to use me? You know, I got divorced before. And I'm like, God, you know, so I felt like this woman. I felt like the woman of Samaria. How many of you guys really felt like this woman of Samaria? Let's be honest. Have you ever felt like, wow, I actually felt like this woman. There's people that probably look down on us like, wow, they're never going to be nothing. Amen. But look at God. Look, look at what the Lord has done through us. Amen. You can actually look and give him praise. Amen. Because this, 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 this is what the Lord has done. It has nothing to do with us. Some of us came off of drugs, crack cocaine. Let me tell you something about drugs. Amen. I don't testify a lot about drugs, but I tried a lot of drugs. Amen. I, I, I tried crack cocaine. Amen. I tried it twice. And I, I, the first time I got so high, it's the best high I ever had. But it, wasn't, it don't compare to Jesus high. Amen. So I tried it again. And I said, you know what? I'm about to become addicted. You know, I heard a, I heard a voice. I wasn't saved then. But I was like, I, I, I begin to talk, my, talk to myself inside of my head. I'm like, you about to become I'm addicted you got to stop so i stopped you know i said um rob people all the time i was i was a i was a thief you know a biggest thief i said go to the mall and you know i said take off my my old air fresh ones on my old box and um put new kicks on and walk out and take new old jeans off and leave out the store and just stupid stuff you know what i'm saying I said, still all the time. And I thank God for deliverance. Amen. That God saw it fit to use someone like me. That God saw it fit to use someone like you. Because we all got a testimony. Amen. But it's people that looked at us. You know, I never forget. I had an uncle. And one of my uncles said this. He tried to curse me. I break off every word curse. He said, before Kimberly gets age 12, she's going to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. He said that about me. He said, before she gets 12 years old, she's going to be pregnant. I break all that work. Listen, it didn't come to pass. Amen. But it's people that try to speak ill on us. There's people that try to talk bad about us before she get that, before he get this and that. This, now we break off every word, Chris, because guess what? God has a plan. Somebody put this up here. God has a plan. Mm -hmm. God has a plan for my life. He has a plan. So let's, let's, let's continue. And let, let me say this. Some of us, we only want to preach to church folks. We only want to talk to church folks. We only feel like church folks is, is important, but we forget about the people in the club. We forget about the, 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 the people in prostitution. I never forget, this is this is real talk. There was this girl and I had actually blocked her. I had actually blocked her. She was like clubbing hard, drinking hard. Same thing I used to do. And um, one day she was like half naked and I just, I was sick of her. I was like, God, I'm sick of her, you know? And the Holy Spirit began to rebuke me, mm-hmm. He rebuked me so hard and he said, 
Kimberly, I didn't tell you to block her. Go unblock her now. Go give this for her. So I had to humble myself and repent for blocking that lady. And I began to pour into her, minister to her. And guess what? She's saved now. She's on fire now, right? Very important. Amen. You say you can't stop yelling, yawning. Amen. I praise God. So listen, we got to get out. Only one to preach to church, folks. Amen. So let's let's look at this scripture. Let's go back. Let's go down to verse 10. And Jesus answered her. And he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is saying to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. In other words, he said, if you knew the free gift of God, who is speaking to you? So how many of us have missed God because we expect him to come in one way? Or uh, we put God in a box or we, we try to judge who he can use or who he can't use. Some of us look on the flesh. We look at this and we, 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 we put people down and we, we look at the appearance of men. Amen. Come on. See, I prophesy we have an ear to hear, this, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I prophesy that we'll be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. So listen, the well. Somebody put the well. It symbolized living water. Living waters is symbolic. Uh, waters that give eternal life. Amen. And it's, it's, the well is symbolic of Jesus being the living well. Jesus is the living well. Don't you want the living well? Amen. The living well springs up inside of us that we have the living well inside of our bellies. Uh, so verse 11, the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with. Uh, and the well is deep. Uh, come on. We hear about the song, deep water, deep water, deep calling them to the deep. Huh? Where will you get that water from, the woman asked. Huh? Let me tell you something, baby. God can make a way out of no way. This thing may seem impossible. It may seem ginormous, huh? whatever you're going through. But God will make a way out of no way. Amen. There's times. And can I begin to testify? Because we're talking about the power of a testimony. So powerful. Amen. Look, there was times where I didn't have any money. Amen. I never forget uh, when I first went to 2014 and I first started trusting God by faith. Uh, and I said, God, Lord, I got a you know a job at, as a respiratory therapist at the hospital, but I'm barely getting hours, Jesus. Uh, and I just began to worship. Uh, all I knew, God said, worship brings in the harvest. And I just began to worship. Uh, and then let me tell you something. As I began to worship, uh, the spirit of the Lord, he came down like fire. He began to consume it like he's consuming me now I'm, I'm like drenched in sweat because he's all over me my god and his fire be just begin to consume me and he said daughter speak my decrees out uh, in my presence uh, speak what you want out uh, in my fire uh, speak what you want out daughter in my glory speak what you want out daughter and i just begin to speak out uh, speak out uh, my god will supply all of my needs uh, according to his riches and glory through christ jesus uh, and i just begin to speak out uh, and let me tell you something i had no food in my fridge I had no money in my account. Uh, but as I began to speak, 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 like I was a crazy woman, I got lost in worship. Uh, my hair was all over the place. Uh, I'm drenched in sweat, uh, tears, uh, snot hanging out. Uh, oh my God, uh, you know, clothes all over the place. Uh, and I just begin to worship uh, and cry out to God. So I got a hold of him. I said, God, uh, I don't have nobody to depend on. God, I trust you. Uh, and let me tell you, I went to my mailbox. Uh, maybe like a day or two later. And don't you know there was a check in my mailbox huh? Oh, for $800. Whew. And at the time, that was a lot of money. My God, when somebody had no food or no gas, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, God. And at the time, I didn't eat as much as I eat now. You know what I'm saying? Now I put on a little weight. But back then, I was like really, really like slim, slim, slim. And let me tell you this. You know, I, I filled up my fridge and I went and I was able to bless like three other people in their fridge as well. Fill up their fridge as well. Give them something because it was around Thanksgiving around that time. Amen. See, God will make a way out of no way. Mm -hmm. There was times uh, when um, I was fighting in court, going through with my ex-husband and I had to pay back like $2,500 in restitution. And listen, I was living like really paycheck the paycheck really really bad back then really bad and let me tell you it was so crazy that when i would have twenty dollars i would try to say god i want to put these 20 in my my gas tank i don't want to put this twenty dollars you know for food like what i'm supposed to do is like i'm trying to make the twenty dollar bill stretch you know what i'm saying 
those were some times. So I remember I said, God, I don't have this money to pay this $2,500 back for restitution. You know, and it, it, that, that was a lot of money for somebody that's not working. I was barely working. I was like, God, this is crazy. But let me tell you what God did. God began to come through. Mm -hmm. he, become, he, he came through in such a powerful way. My attorney at the time, he said, once you get a job, once you do this. And I was like, God didn't tell me to get a job. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys know that there's some people around you that will try to shake your faith and that will try to say, do this and do the opposite of what God has said, but you got to stand on God's word. Like God didn't tell me to get a job. I know it may sound crazy to people. Amen. They don't have no faith, but I trust God. I begin to close my eyes again. I begin to worship. I begin to praise God. I begin to stand on scripture. I begin to march around my room like I'm walking around the walls of Jericho. I begin to clap my hands and stop my feet. Uh, come on, I begin to prophesy over my situation. And let me tell you something. I got that money. Uh huh. I got that money supernaturally. Somebody began to call me and they said, you know what? God put it on my heart to give you a check for you know i think it was uh, i think it was a little bit more i think what i had to pay back was like 2500 but they gave me a check for a little bit more i'm gonna say close to 3000 you know that came out of faith that came out of worship that came out of suffering that came out of prayer and who am i talking to just some people on here and come on I, i'm in a situation I, I need god to turn some things around too amen can i be honest and transparent but god's about to do it again if he did it before he can do it again because why we have history with god amen so this woman was like you have nothing to draw the water with, Jesus. Oh, Jesus can't. Come on, Jesus can make a way. He can make a desert in the wilderness. So let's go down to verse 12. Amen. She asked this question. Are you greater than our father, Jacob? He gave us the well and drank it for himself. As did his sons for his livestock. So she asked this question. She began to question Jesus. See, how many times, let's be honest, how many times have some of us questioned God and we try to analyze or reason, like, how is this even possible? We try to figure things out. Nah, baby, it's not our job to try to figure things out. Come on, prophesy. It's my job to believe. Mm -hmm. It's my job to believe what God has spoken to me. See, there's some words that God, was, he's speaking to us right now. It's going to go over our head. There's some words that's going to go over our head, literally. God spoke some things to me. Like, I remember when God first called me into full-time ministry, right? Just to not even have a job. And I remember, like, I used to work in the hospital, got degrees I can't even use because God said, don't, you don't use those degrees. Mm -mm. I was trying to be a medical doctor for many years. God said, don't, don't go to medical school. So I remember I said, okay, God, I'm coming out the hospital. I'm going to seek you full. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do your will. So I remember the day I got fired. I got fired, you guys. Whew. My old supervisor, she found out that I was on probation. It hurt. It hurt, you guys. I was like, oh, my God, she found out I was on probation. It was the craziest thing. I was up for promotion and I ended up getting terminated, which is crazy. So I remember um, here I was a travel therapist and an opportunity came to work at like Denver Health, which is like one of the main big systems in Colorado in that area. And I, they was like, we, Kimberly, we want you there. You know, people are saying nice things about you. You know, you got a good reputation. So here I am. Uh, and then my supervisor said, well, it's, it's time to do a background check. I said, a background check? You want to do a background? And I, I felt in my heart, I said, God, they're going to know that I'm on probation. Sure enough, they found out I was on probation and I got terminated. But then my supervisor called me. She said, when are you getting off probation? I said, oh, I'm coming off in July. She's like, and this was January, January, I think January 2016. And I said, oh, I come off in um, July. She's like, we're going to hire you back. And the guy said, no, you're not going back. But what am I saying? So I end up getting fired from this job, right? But then God ended up speaking to me. He said, you're going to do full-time ministry. You're going to, at the time I was at, had church hurt. He said, you're going to go back to church, work the altar and lay hands. And at the time I said, God, who's going to work the altar? Who's going to lay hands? And at the time, I didn't want to touch nobody at the time. You know, I was like a germaphobe. Many of you guys, how many work in healthcare? You know about like germs and all that. You just always wear gloves. You don't touch nobody without gloves. That was me. It was this big germaphobe. I said, I ain't touching nobody, you know, but it came to pass like six months later, right? So sometimes God will give you these words that will go over your head and all these instructions, but God will make a way. So here's this woman in, 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 in John chapter, two, uh, John um, uh, verse 12, John 4 verse 12, and she's questioning Jesus. And to answer her question, she said, is anyone greater than our father, Jacob? To answer her question, God is greater. Amen. 
God is greater, and she's she, she's soon gonna find out how great Jesus is. So let's look at verse 13. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be will be thirsty again, the temporary water. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. All right, so let me say this. Regular water, earthly things are temporal. Amen. But only God can satisfy. Let me say that only God can satisfy. When, when, when he gets a hold of us, we're different. Amen. Let's be honest. All right, I'm going to be transparent. So stripping, I started stripping at the age of 13, started stripping, start stripping in an all black club, making $200 a night. So I said, you know what? I'm going to strip at a white club. So I was making $500 a night minimum on a minute, uh, you know, on a good night, I would make a thousand dollars. Don't you know, the next day I would go to the mall and blow all that money. <laughs> I have nothing to show from that. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. So here I am stripping, sleeping around, blowing money, living a fast life crazy stuff you know and i was empty i was so empty inside and i was chasing relationships chasing fame you know and i'll say this i was in a movie before i was trying to act and you know my my, my passion and my goal in life was i said oh i want to become this famous stripper i want to be a feature stripper that's that was my goal and my name was charisma glow that was my name and i would have these long fingernails that glue in the dark and I had this long platinum blonde hair that glue in the dark. And everything around me, is, it was glow in the dark, glow in the dark, right? And I thank God for getting a hold of me. Amen. I, listen, I never forget. Here I am, shacking up with this man. He lied to me. I was like maybe 19. He was the same age as my mother at the time. And I'm like, wow, he lied to me. And I found out um, jealous, abusive, and he wanted to marry me. He took me home to see his mother. Mother was a church lady. She took me to church. And I'm going in this, I went to church and I was like, I felt dirty. I felt unclean. I'm like, I got to get out of this church. Oh my God. And I start feeling God on me. I, I didn't know at the time was God dealing with me in church. In this church, I, I was trying to hold back tears, but nobody could pick me up in the spirit. I'm in this church. You know, I wish that the pastor or the person in the house would call me out. You know, I would have been saved much more sooner, you know, but listen, we got to be sensitive. And and, and and if God is telling you to pick somebody out, pick them up in the realm of the spirit, call them out, call them for it. Amen. That's what we got to do. So from that moment, I was like, man, I don't feel comfortable shacking up no more. I, I, I made up every excuse. He wouldn't let me get out his sight. This man was just so possessive of me. He was just like, where are you going? I had to lie and say, I'm going to Fayetteville, North Carolina to visit my parents for a week or two. I'm coming right back. And I said, here, I'll prove it to you. I'm leaving like half my stuff here. And at the time, I had a lot of expensive stuff, you know, because um, guess what? You blowing $500 a night and $1,000 a night, you can buy designer purses. You can buy designer clothes, designer makeup and whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it's nothing to you. So I left all that stuff there at his house and I never looked back. And that man begged me for years to get back with him. I even blocked myself on social media for a few uh, a few years. So I was afraid, you know, that he would find me because he was that controlling, that possessive of me. So what am I saying? Amen. When when he got a hold of me in that church, I was not the same. God was dealing with me. I'm trying to run and fight the calling, fight the calling. But when I came back to Fayetteville, North Carolina, guess what? My younger sister got saved. And then as she got saved, she ended up, my daddy getting saved. See, God not only wants to start saving you, dealing with you, get you delivered, but deal with your family and your whole household be saved for real, for real. So my whole family's saved now. And I'm like, wow, here I am trying to run from the call and run. Here I am still trying to strip in the club and feel some kind of way inside. And then the enemy was like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to kill her now. I'm going to take her out now. See, the devil is defeated and Jesus Christ is Lord. So here I am a house full of church uh, folks praying, praying for me. Amen. Some of us are here right now because somebody prayed for you. Let's be honest. Um, a house full of uh, uh, Christians praying for me. And I'm sneaking out like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to the club and make my money and all this. And I'll never forget one morning I woke up and I heard the devil say, you're going to die today. And I felt death. And you guys heard me tell this testimony before I'm going to tell it again because it's new, amen, to somebody else, amen, but it's giving God the glory. And I said, okay. Here I am for two weeks running around 
in my car with a Bible my sister gave me because she was saved for real. She was saved. She was different. My sister didn't want to go to the club with me no more. She didn't want to hang out with me no more. She didn't want to, you know, shop till she drop anymore with me. She she was just over there. All she was about was Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I was trying to run from it. And the devil said, you're going to die today. And I was like, I, I said, I was, I think I was like 19 at the time or something. I was like, I'm too young to die. Or maybe I was like, I think I was 21 at the time. Yeah, 21. And I said, I'm too young to die. Whatever. You know how we think when we're young, we think we're all invincible. And um, I brushed it off. And later on that night, it was raining so hard. And I got in my car and I was driving down the street and there was Chingy. I remember that rapper Chingy and I was listening to his, his hit. And then um, it was like a slow motion movie. I looked in my rearview mirror and this. And I, I was stopped at the light. It was going so slow, like a movie. And I said, this car's about to hit me. And I said, nah, they can't be dumb to hit me because it's an empty lane right here. It's an empty lane. And sure enough, they hit me. They slammed it to my four-door sedan. It got smushed to a two-door. Mm. Glass was all over the highway. I had braces. Braces, them popped off. How your braces popped off? Eyebrow ring popped off. CDs, credit cards, glass all over the highway. And I thought uh, I was dead. I jumped out of the car. I was so hysterical. I'm like, God, you know, I, I was just like, oh, my God, I'm dead. And uh, let me back up. <sighs> the lady that hit me, she calmed me down. She was like, you have a black and mouth? I was like, what? And she was high. She was high. I was like, are you serious? You hit my car and asked me to have a black and mouth? But anyways, um, got back in the car, calming down. Then another car hit me. Another car hit me and I lost it. I was like, oh my God, the devil tried to take me out for real on this night. So that day in the car, um, when I got myself together, calm down. Um, I never forget the firefighter came to the scene first and he picked up that Bible. My sister gave me two weeks prior, looked at the car, shook his head, looked at me, shook his head. And he handed me the Bible. He said, here, young lady, this saved your life. So I was like, okay, God, I got to come out the club. I got to stop stripping Jesus. I got to stop fornicating. I got to get myself together. So I was hurt, you guys. I was hurt. I went to a chiropractor for like six months, you know, because I had bad whiplash. I couldn't turn my neck at all. I got to find that picture. at my mama house where I had a neck brace on. And um, I, I was really, really hurt. Yeah, I went to like six months of therapy because um, I had so much pain in my back. And, you know, I was like, this is crazy. But I, I, uh, when I got myself together, when I healed good enough, and listen, I was I had anxiety off the roof. It was off the chain. I was I was traumatic. I was afraid to drive, but at the time I had to drive because someone in my family had a DWI and they they couldn't drive, so I had to drive that person in my family. And I was shaking like this, and I was like, "It's okay, it's okay." So I was shaking, trying to take this person where they need to go. And I went to I went to the strip club, cleaned up my locker. I never looked back. And shortly after that, um, went to this uh, one of those mother houses, the mother of the church. She laid hands on me. I started speaking in tongues and she invited me to church and I got baptized and went down in the water, came up speaking in tongues. Amen. Never the same. Never the same. Amen. So with God, I'm saying I'm going somewhere with Jesus. Amen. One encounter with him. You're never the same. Here's this woman of Samira. Never the same. All right. So let, let me let me let me give you this. The woman at the well and Jesus has something in common. What did they have in common? They both drank from the well. Amen. Remember, Jesus Christ is our high priest. So verse 15, let's go down to verse 15. Amen. The woman said, sir, give me some water and so I won't be thirsty again or have to come here to draw water. She didn't really understand. Amen. What she was asking for. So listen, have you ever prayed something and you, you don't really even know what you're asking for? <laughs> I used to pray prayers like, God, make me more oily, God. Make me more anointed, God. You ever pray these prayers? And then all of a sudden you're going through warfare. Like you feel like you're being crushed. And whew, well, this woman, she was she she didn't even know what she was asking for. Mm -mm -mm. You don't even realize, like, wow, you're just asking God to, you know, crush you and the the, the sacrifice more to whom much is given, much more is required. So let's go down to verse 16. Jesus said. Go call your husband and, and tell him to come here. The woman answered, I have no husband, sir. Jesus said, you are saying right. You have no husband for you had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. And she said, he said, what you said is true. And the woman turned to him and said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. So let me stop here. 
Jesus is talking to her, amen, um, to that one person who doesn't have a squeaky clean black background, amen. Some of us are waiting, and I heard so many excuses like, I can't come to God because I don't have this together. I'm going to wait till I get myself together to come to God. No, come to Jesus as you are. I came to Jesus out of the club, you know what I'm saying? It took me getting a car accident, a near-death accident for me to get myself in, in the club. When I came, listen, when I first came to church, real talk, I didn't have no church clothes. You know, all I had was the, the five-inch stilettos with the platform. All I had was the mini skirts. All I had was the crop tops. All I had, you know what I'm saying, was, was these stripper clothes. So I, I came in church as I was. Stomach out, belly ring showing, you know what I'm saying? Tattoos showing. And, um, the, the, you know, I thank God for the mature folks, the church mothers. She just put a sheet over me and hugged me and rocked me in the service. You know, but as I gave my life to, to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit showed me how to dress. Uh, the Holy Spirit helped me to, to dress modest. Now I'm not, I don't want to show my boobs anymore. I, I, back in the day, I had to show my boobs. I had to show my cleavage. I remember, this is a real talk, amen, you know, Talking about somebody being vain. Oh, I was the queen of vanity. Talking about somebody um, wanting to go and show her body. That was me all day, every day. I never forget, I, I put this romper on. It was so tight and it showed everything, like my whole shape. And I never forget, I went to Walmart and this lady, she looked at me, she's like, oh, and she covered her son's eyes. Her son was like maybe, maybe five or something. And she said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I didn't understand, like, oh, my God, really? So I start feeling some kind of way, like, I didn't think what I was doing would have an effect on kids, right? But when I start living for Jesus, uh, Jesus began to uh, uh, cleanse me up where I didn't want to show my body no more. I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying, dress like that anymore, right? And th that's what Jesus does. It, he, he will take that one person that doesn't have the best background. See, so, so I'm thinking that you got to be all perfect and clean and you know what happens to real people doing real ministry authentic folk huh, that been through something who am i talking to today that actually been through something amen so jesus gives this woman a word of knowledge he gives her insight in her life and she started to believe in him let's start believing god for signs and wonders amen so we can get the prostitutes off the streets we can get the the whoremongers off the streets uh, we can get the crackheads and the drug dealers off the streets amen how many of you guys want to start believing god amen just for uh, uh just a word of knowledge a word of knowledge can change any everything you know when i start asking i said god use me Give me opportunities. It wasn't always in the church. Some people right now, you only want to do stuff in the church. You only want to do stuff for church folks later for that. When it's a world full of dying folk, huh? you know, it's people that we pass by every day that don't know Jesus. So I start praying for opportunities and they start coming. One opportunity I shared this before. Um, I wasn't feeling the best. I started having headaches. And here I am, like, I'm just picking up my kids. I just wanted to go home, right? Wanted to go home and lay down, be honest, cook dinner, lay down. And I start getting the word of knowledge. And then all of a sudden, my legs start hurting. My leg was like hurting. And I was like, God, why my leg hurt? I don't have no leg problems. And then I looked up at that moment when I started asking the Holy Spirit. And I saw this man limping in the store, limping, limping. I'm like, okay, okay, God, that's not my leg. That's his leg over there. He's coming towards me. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this gas station trying to pay for my gas. And he go past me and he go on the, uh, the, the, the glass. Uh, we know the beer's at, and he gets him like a 40. And um, I think he got something, um, maybe something to smoke. He was high. He wasn't driving, but somebody else was driving. So I paid for my gas, and I was like, God, I can't shake this. I got to say something to this man. So I went up to him, and then we started having a crowd. People was like, what's she doing? You know, I started praying for him right then in the open. And then he actually got healed. He got healed. His leg got healed right there at the gas station. I wasn't in church. I didn't have lights on me. I, I didn't have a microphone in my hand. You know, nobody saw other than people at the gas station. And he said, thank you. I said, I didn't heal you. Jesus healed you. You should have seen the look on this man's face. He was just like, what? And you know, he sober right up. He sober right up. He sober right up in that gas station. That's our God. He can take someone that's drunk, sober them up. He could take someone that's on, on pills and cl cleanse them up. He could take someone that's, that's fornicating and a homosexual or whatever and clean them up when they don't want to do it no more. Jesus. So what am I saying? He used this woman. He spoke to her. 
Do, do, do you think she wanted to slip around after that? Absolutely not. Do you think she wanted to be used up by some man after that? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. See, Jesus will give you purpose. He gave me purpose. I, I told you what I thought my purpose was in life. I said, I don't want to be this, this feature stripper. You know, I want to dance around club and travel. You know, stupid stuff. You know, that was my, I thought that was going to be my, what I was going to do in life. But God had a plan. You know, God had a plan. So God, when he, when he spoke to this woman with the crazy background, like many of us, oh my God, guess what? He began to use her. She began to do the work of an evangelist. Hear me. God wants to use you. God wants to use you in such a powerful way. We can do the work. Amen. Don't let nobody make you feel you're not qualified because you don't have uh, uh, all these credentials behind your name. Listen, I got credentials. I can't even use the credentials. God said no. <laughs> he said no. I can pull out my degrees right there and I can show you all. God said no. You're not going to do that. You know? So let, let, me, let me tell you this. Oh, my God. Don't let a title feel like you 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 qualify to do what God called you to do. We can all do the work of an evangelist. We can all tell somebody about Jesus. We can all come on, just go out there and tell somebody about a man. And this is what this lady did. Mm hmm So guess what? Let's go down to verse 25. 25. And bear with me. I know it's a, a lot of scripture, but I want to give you some words. Amen. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. He is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I am, I am he who you speak about. Amen. It's me. So Jesus reveals himself to this lady. She was never the same. Have you ever had an encounter with God? I'm praying tonight that you have an encounter with God. Amen. That you're never the same. Amen. Come on and listen. <sighs> See, I got saved. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to my testimony. I got saved after almost dying in a car accident. I sat in church. I sat in church for 10 years. People are like, you want to do this? You want to do that? No. But it wasn't until I started seeking God on my own. It wasn't until I prayed and said, God, show me you're real. Jesus. Show me you're real, Jesus. Let me encounter you, Jesus. Mm. Jesus, let me feel you. I started, I, oh my God. Mm. I started feeling Jesus every day. I started feeling his fire every day. I started, oh my God. I started hearing him every day. I, I, I started having visitations from Jesus, walking in my room. Oh my God. Um, I started seeing things I can't explain. You know, I, I started getting revelation. Uh, it was just, it was crazy. Never the same. He, he revealed himself to me. How can I go back to stripping? How can I go back to fornicating? How can I go back to cursing? How could I, I could, it, it'd be crazy. You know what I'm saying? After I got to know the one, amen. Jesus, I, I'm praying for an account. I'm praying for a fresh anointing. So verse 27, I'm almost done about to wrap this up and then I'm going to flow however the Holy Spirit's leading me to flow. Amen. The disciples came back and they marveled. They was like, what? What is Jesus doing? Uh, um, talking to this lady, they marveled when he saw Jesus talking to the woman and, and, but no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking to her? You know? So the disciples at first, they didn't believe that women should be taught. Oh yeah. That was useless to pour into women. I know people right now that don't believe in women preachers. I know people right now that's against women preachers, but God, he can use whoever he see fit. He can use you whether you're old, no matter your background. He can use you no matter how young you are. Amen. And some of these and, and so, some of these Jews did not even want to associate with women. They didn't want to associate with a Samaritan because they were Jews. But we got to, again, we got to be careful who we look down on. Mm -hmm. You're looking down on a person that may not have a big following right now, but Maybe God can do a, a, a work in their life. You may be looking down on a person right now. They may come out of jail. They may, you know what I'm saying? They may got, they be maybe tatted up or whatever like that or pierced or whatever. And God will use them in such a powerful way. Amen. They, they, they could be the next person to cause a revival. So listen to this. You hear what I said? You got to be careful who you look down on because they could be the next person God can use to cause a revival. Hear me. Remember what, remember I just said that. So verse 28, the woman left her water jar. 
she left her water jar and she went into town and she said to people, verse 29, come see about a man who told me all I ever did. Can this be the Christ? Verse 30. So they went out of town and they were coming to him. So listen, notice how she left her water jar. She left her water jar. She left, listen, we got to leave our baggage to do the work of God. And maybe we got, she left her baggage so she could do the work of an evangelist. Amen. She took off the old man, put on the new man. Amen. I had to leave my baggage behind. Listen, you know how many people I had to leave off because when I start serving God for real, all those people in the club I danced with that I was smoking with or sleeping around with, and you know, that I would kick it with day by day when I was in the club, those people weren't my friends. They, they, they was like, mm. you know, um, let's be honest. When we got to say someone, how many friends we lost? You know, those people weren't trying to hear about Jesus at first. It was like trying to be supportive, but we realized that it wasn't really support. They weren't feeling that, you know, like I'm really trying to live for Jesus, but you're trying to get me back into sin. I'm really trying to live for Jesus, but you know, you're not comfortable with that. You know, you're not comfortable with me sharing my faith. You know, so sometimes you got to leave these people behind until you get delivered, till you get strong enough. And then God will raise you up as a deliverer like he did Moses to go back to Egypt, but to pull some people out of bondage, literally. Amen. So here's this woman with a past. She she left her water jar. I'm going to tell somebody tonight, leave your baggage. See, when, listen to this. Even even Elisha, right? When, when, when Elijah put that mantle on Elisha, he, 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 he left. You know, he left the oxen right there in the field. He left, amen, to go follow after the man of God, to go follow after purpose and destiny, amen. You got to leave that leave that baggage behind. So let's go to verse 39, and I'm about to wrap up. So many Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus, believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. We're talking about the power of testimony, the power of a testimony. They believed because of her testimony. He told me all that I ever did. That was her testimony. He told me all that I ever did. He told me all that I ever did. That was her testimony. The woman at the well, her testimony glorified God. Her testimony didn't glorify self. Her testimony didn't glorify, you know, uh, uh, just selfish ambitions and motives and trying to be famous or get rich. It glorified God. Her testimony caused people to believe in God. This is what God wants you to know tonight. It's your testimony causing people to believe in Jesus. I'm talking to somebody today. It's your testimony causing people to believe in Jesus. Some of us don't testify at all. We're so afraid what people are going to think. Tell it. Tell people what God brought you out of. Tell people, amen, what you've been through. Amen. You never know how, how your testimony can cause somebody to repent, cause somebody to get delivered, draw people back to Christ so they can believe for their own, right, their own self. So verse 40. So when the Samarian, Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there for two days. How many days he stayed there for two more days? How many days did they stay? Jesus said he stayed for two more days among the Samaritans, among the people that they said Jews don't talk to Samaritans, among the people that the Jews look down upon, upon the rejects in society. He stayed with those folks that nobody had time to preach to because some of us only want to preach to church folks. We don't want to preach to the backsliders. We don't want to preach to somebody that's struggling. We don't want to preach to somebody. Amen. It don't look like nothing. But verse 41, many people, many more people believe because of his word, his word. Verse 42, and they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is indeed the savior of the world. So the people, they believe in God even the more when they encountered God and they got to know them by themselves, for themselves. This is so powerful. Amen. God wants you to know him for yourself. Mm hmm you may hear a testimony <clears throat> excuse me i'm starting to cough but god <clears throat> he wants you to know him for yourself amen so the women told people her testimony and people gather and they start to believe in jesus amen and our testimony should be about winning souls and about bringing harvest for the glory of god hear me the reject the one with the horrible background the least in society that's the person god used for the revival so if you're following me say prophet i'm following you Amen. I want to give you this word. Amen. Um, and, and for two days, she stayed it for two days. Verse 43, he stayed it for two days. Then he went to Galilee. I told you that he had to make a stop, which was Samaria before he went to Galilee. So verse 43, now we see that a revival came, broke out. Amen. And now verse 43, he's going about his business, going back, going to Galilee. Amen. So guess what? Jesus Christ, he broke traditions. He broke cultures. 
cultures, amen. Um, a a, a three-day revival broke out, amen. Day number one, if you can't catch it, let me just backtrack. He's he he was talking to that Samaritan woman, amen. Uh, day two and three, he stayed for two more days, amen, and, and spoke to many Samaritans, and they, they got saved, and they got delivered, amen. So we see Jesus Christ breaking traditions of men. Some people want to put God in a box. Uh, some people want to try to tell how God he's, how God he's going to move. He's, he's sovereign, amen. Some people want to, you know, try to control the move of God, trying to control the move of the spirit. Let God have his way. Let, let God move. Amen. Jesus Christ broke the stereotypes. Amen. See, back in those days, people are so judgmental. They it's like, well, if God going to use anybody, it's going to be a Jew. Nah, baby. God used a Samaritan woman that had a horrible background. Amen. In Jesus name to do a revival, to start a revival. Powerful. Amen. So when it's a move of God. Mm mm mm. But it's a move of God, amen. It, 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 God will cross, amen, culture, boundaries, social economic statuses, amen. It, it just don't matter because God is he, He's so powerful, amen. So somebody prophesied in my testimony. My testimony is to glorify God, amen. Come on, somebody. I, I want to prophesy that we're going to have the right motives. We're going to have the right motives when we begin to post, amen. Let's be honest. Can, can we really be honest? How many of you guys really had the right motives all the time when you post on social media? Some people wanted to post things to get attention. Let's just, let's just repent of that tonight. Amen. No more uh, attention seeking. You know, if you're feeling insecure, say, God, help me with my self-esteem. Jesus, help me. He'll do it. Amen. And come on, if I'm posting my testimony, try, you know, I'm trying to be famous. Is God in that? If I'm posting my testimony, trying to get rich, is God in that? My testimony should be about winning souls. If it's not about winning souls, I'm wrong. Amen. If, you know, if my testimony is about being seen by men, you know, uh, you know, trying to be seen by men, I'm wrong. Amen. If, my, if I'm posting my testimony or posting something, to try to get a bunch of likes and followers and open doors and opportunities, then I'm wrong. All right. So uh, uh, no matter how crazy our testimony is, you, you guys, I, I don't share that. I don't share most there's so much I can share tonight. Oh my gosh. You know, but it's, it's, it's supposed to draw people to Christ Jesus. Amen. It's supposed to win souls for him. Amen. You know, if, if, cause if God did it for me or for you, why can't he do it for the lady over there? You know, let's be honest. Everybody on here ain't saved. Everybody on our social media platform ain't saved. And there's people right now that I went to school with and they may be on here and I love you and I'm praying for you, but they're not saved. But but they, they, they see God in me. They, they can see Christ in me. They should be able to see Christ in you. Amen. And they should want to know the God we serve because we're testifying. Drawing souls back to Christ. Not, not ourselves, but Christ. Very important to start being Christ-centered, Christ-led. Amen. So many of us, we, 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 we want to do things with the microphone and just be seen by people, seen by folks. Later for that, I'd rather have the applause of heaven and heaven back in me. There's some flaky, wish-washy people in the first place that when that when, when I preach something they don't like, they're gonna what block me or unfollow me or do blog posts about me, call me false, talk about me, stab me in the back later for those people. Amen. I want to win souls. Come on, somebody say, I want to win souls for Jesus. I want to be a soul winner. I want to have a burden for souls. Amen. I want to tell somebody about Jesus. Come on. Somebody said, I want to testify. I want to testify about Jesus, where Jesus brought me from. I want to let people know that there is a God, that God is real. I break off the shame and I break off the embarrassment to, in the name of Jesus. Testify. Testify. Because guess what? Amen. Whew. The devil is defeated when we begin to testify. We're giving the devil a black eye. The enemy is overcome. Come on. By the blood of the lamb, by the words of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb powerful the enemy don't want you to testify the enemy wants you to be mute the enemy wants you to be silent the enemy wants you to keep stay bottled up and keep all this stuff in the devil is a liar amen so listen our motive shouldn't be to compete with somebody else when we when we're doing things our motive should be to glorify god like god are you pleased with this amen are you pleased with what i'm doing god amen come on i prophesy and when people look at us they see christ they see christ they can see Christ Jesus. Amen. So the woman at the well, she had multiple husbands. She probably would look down upon. You know, I was looked down upon one time. And um, but God can literally he, he can restore our names, he can restore our character. 
Amen. You know, people probably call her a slut or a whore, you know, but God calls that one person that people look down upon to cause a revival. My God, that's oh, that's only God. Only God can do that. Amen. So I, I come against being self-righteous. We got to stop being self-righteous, holding our, our nose up at people, being stiff neck, judgmental, full of hatred and wickedness and selfish ambition. And we need to start caring about the loss. Mm -hmm. Care about the, listen, even if you don't agree with somebody and you see they're in crazy sin, there's people that's doing crazy stuff. That's an, uh, an abomination in God's sight. Pray for them. Pray for them before you try to, you know, just say all kind of curse them with words and all this pray for them pray for them god i pray they get out of bondage god i pray they get saved i pray they don't leave this earth god without getting saved in jesus name i pray it god in the name of jesus hallelujah so listen if god can use a a, a messed up woman with a, a, a crazy background can god use you come on can god use you can god use you Come on, single mothers, single parents. Can God use you? I'm talking to somebody. Can God use you? He wants to use you. Stop feeling like you're not good enough. Stop feeling like you're unworthy. God called you. When God called Moses, he began to say, I, I don't have it together, God. I stutter, God. I, I, I just start making all these excuses. God called you. He called you. He, you don't got to be perfect and squeaky clean for God to use you. Amen. To call you, let God cleanse you up and do a work. And when God called me, guess what? I, I was telling my friend this today. When God called me, I was one of those Christians that had, uh, first of all, I was on probation when he called me. Uh, second of all, I was one of those Christians that had a private, fa uh, a public Facebook, but a private Instagram. Instagram full of lingerie. I'm in a mirror. I used to be selfie queen in the mirror. You know, just all these pictures of me, nothing but lingerie. That's the truth. And I never forget, I, I'm in ministry at the time and starting prayer line, starting my prayer line. And this lady from my prayer line, she's like, Sister Kim, is this you? And she sent me a picture of my Instagram page. And here I am in the cell phone with a selfie and, and some lingerie. I'm like, oh my God, you know? And I, I had to end up deleting that Instagram page, you know? But God called me, me, the selfie queen. He called me. The person that had to show her body because I was so insecure and I needed attention. It was the wrong kind of attention. God called me, amen, to do a work for him. God anointed me. He gave me purpose, right? God wants to give you purpose. So can we just surrender everything? Amen. If you're a reject, if you're a fornicator, a trunk, um, a gossip or whatever, just, just repent right now. God, I, I, I want to get right. To, come on, somebody. Come on, God, I, I, I want to stop smoking. Uh, I want to stop uh, drinking. Uh, I want to stop popping pills, Jesus. Uh, I, I want to stop masturbating, God. I, I want to stop looking at porn. Uh, I, I want to stop cursing, God. I, I want to stop, you know, being that womanizer or being that abusive person. Uh, God, I want to stop being jealous and envious. And God, I want you to do a work in me, God. Can you use someone like me? The answer is yes. God, I, I want to stop feeling sorry for myself. Can you use me? Yes, God wants to use you. And I just decree, come on. Shame got to go out the door. Come on, cast out shame. We cast off shame, embarrassment in the name of Jesus. Come on and say, I surrender all. I surrender all. Come on. I surrender all, all to Jesus Christ, my Savior. I surrender all. We just give it all to God. I surrender all. God, we just give it to you. I surrender all. Give it to him. Ooh, I don't know the lyrics, but God, we give it to you. All to Jesus. Christ, my Savior. I surrender all. We give it to God. Come on, all that, all of it. God, I want to be made over. Tell God, make me over. Come on make me over. I want to be brand new. Come on. I want to, I want to be a new creature in Christ. Uh, I, I, I want to be delivered. Come on. I, some of us be going through things. You, we can be okay for a season. And then that same demon will try to come back and pull us back. The devil is a liar. Listen, I went through a season where everything I got delivered from came back with a vengeance. I'm like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and listen, I had to go surrender again. Amen. 
I had to get on my face again. I had to show that devil what's up. I had to push back my plate. I had to go harder in consecration and fast and really begin to war. Amen. To get that devil off my back. Because I'm not going back to the strip club. I'm not going back to a homosexual relationship. I'm not going back popping pills. I'm not going drinking like a fish. I'm not going cursing people out, cursing people mamas out. I'm not going back to cutting cars and tires and slashing up. I'm not doing stupid stuff like that. I'm not going back to stealing and... No way. Amen. I'm not being that scorned, bitter woman anymore. Amen. Because God has done a work. Amen. Come on. We're not going back. We we got to go forward. God wants you to go forward. And it starts with this heart. It starts with motives. It starts with motives right here in this heart. Amen. It, it starts. Amen. So if somebody on here, if you're not saved, if you're not saved, come on. Maybe you're watching this. and You don't know Jesus. This is what this is about. Amen. Yes, uh, I may prophesy. Amen. I, I may pray for the sick if God wants me to pray for the sick. One person, amen. I, I feel like somebody got carpal tunnel, so, so arthritis in their hands. I bind up arthritis. Jesus. Whoa, I bind up arthritis in Jesus' name. Mm. I feel the guy healing somebody's hand right now. Jesus. Listen, if you're not saved, if you want to know Jesus, repeat after me. Lord, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God was Jesus on the third day. And I shall be saved. Come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. I want to live for you in Jesus name. If you prayed that prayer, I just want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Amen. I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Amen. I feel somebody getting healed mm, in this hand. Amen. If you have backslidden on here, if you backslidden, come on to say, God, I want to rededicate my life to you. Come on. Some people right now, Maybe you fell away. You're not hungry for God no more. It happens. Let's be honest. It happens. It happens. It happens. You know, we're not as hungry for God like we used to be. God, I, I want to rededicate my life to you. Come on. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Thank you, Lord. Give me you. I hope you're not too late. Ooh, God. I got a cold, you guys, but I'm trying to push through. Lord. Give me you, Lord, give me you. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. God, thank you, Jesus. Whew. I can't I can't even really sing like I normally sing in private because my sinus is, is all, but God is good. Listen, oh, Lord, give me you. I heard the song of the Lord in my mouth. Lord, give me you. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Listen, there's somebody on here. God is speaking to me. You have neck pain. And if that's you, this is, I want to, we're going to get our communion. If you can get your communion out, we've got to do communion. And then I'm going to pray for a couple of folks and begin to prophesy to some. Amen. If you have neck pain, I just want to speak to you. And God, we come against pain in the neck whiplash in the neck and god by your stripes that person is healed in jesus name lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you it's me oh lord i'm on my knees crying out to you oh god God is giving you joy, Miss Sybil, in this season. Amen. Oh, God, we thank you for supernatural joy to come on Sybil, Father, in Jesus' name. We bind up the neck pain in the name of Jesus. And God, we just thank you, God, for the divine healing. Lord, give me you. Yes, God. I can't get a song in my mouth. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. God, I thank you, God, for your fire. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. All right, Silver, you're healed in Jesus' name. I, I lose the fire of God right now upon you, Miss Civil. 
in Jesus' name, Roshia, Ramashe, 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 in Jesus' name, receive that anointing. Oh, God. Oh, Roshia, Ramashe, I, I break the stubborn pain in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, when I look at you, Sybil, Sybil, uh, what I see is um, you've been waiting on this call, a phone call. You've been waiting for this, a good, um, just, I feel like you're waiting on a call or you're in expectation of a call, like a good news. And God, I just thank you. Good news come forth. And that phone call she's been waiting for, come forth now in Jesus' name. And just let me know if that pain is gone. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, we thank you. Lord, give me you. God, I thank you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. God, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Rama shikaramashe. Oh, God. God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, whoever you want to speak to. Mm. God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, God. Okay. When I, let me see, where's she at? When I look at you, woman of God, I see you stretch before the Father. Amen. And then I can even see the Spirit of the Lord just coming in his kabod, just coming to sit down upon you. And God is telling you, my daughter, you will arise and you will go forth. The enemy has tried to make you stuck and trying to make you feel discouraged and try to even question, cause you to question yourself and the abilities that I have given you. But my kabod is on you. My glory is sitting upon you. My glory is upon you. And I'm the God that has anointed to you to go forth in your calling i'm the god that's anointed you to go forth in your assignment to, i'm the god mm, that has given you the gifts and the ideas there is a book in the books that has to come forth god says continue to market your book i never told you to stop promoting the book i never told you to stop sharing the book amen begin to share begin to testify begin to talk about the book that god has given you to share because there's people that need to hear your testimony there's people that need to hear what he has brought you from in jesus name but that's that's what I see for you, woman of God, in Jesus' name. Oh God, Yaramashi. That's what I see. Amen. Go forth. See, listen, if you if you have some of us wrote books, if you don't even share the books, come on, man. And I'm not saying this from a publisher standpoint, but I am a publisher, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves as a publisher. You know, I'm gonna start being more selective on who I decide to publish, you know, because I don't want to be the only one sharing your book. I'm sharing people books that don't even share their own books. The devil is a liar. I'm not doing it no more. Amen. Share your book. God gave you the book for a reason. Share your book. Share it. Tell somebody, yes, I I, I wrote this book and, uh, and and God gave me this book and it's healing and it's deliverance in this book. Share your book. Share it. Let somebody know, amen, about what God gave you, right? Share the book in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Hallelujah. <sighs> Woman of God, when I when I look at you, what I'm seeing is hair, and I'm seeing your scalp, Amen. But I'm seeing stronger, thicker hair in Jesus' name. Yara mashiko ramashikaramashikaramashik, stronger, thicker hair. And you know how, like the saints of old said, your hair was like the glory, Amen. This uh, this another wave, another anointing of glory that is coming upon you in the name of Jesus, Amen. When you begin to go to sleep. Amen. It's the glory cloud. Not only will come and come see about you, but see about your children in the nighttime hour. You're about to be amazed because in the nighttime hour, your children are going to have visitations from God. It's almost going to be like they're going to be like Samuel. When Samuel began to realize it was God speaking to him. First, he thought it was Eli. Eli said, no, nope. the third time you hear it, say, Father, your servant hears. Speak. Your servant is listening. Oh, I got to get myself together. Listen, there's a cloud, amen. Cloud by day, pillar of fire at night. There is a, 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 a cloud. It's going to start dealing with your children in that nighttime hour, amen. Your children are going to have these prophetic dreams. They're going to have these uh, calling dreams to do the work, amen, to do the work of an evangelist, to come forth in their assignment, to do the work of the teacher, amen. I'm looking at your son. Your son is being highlighted before me, woman of God, amen. And when I say woman of God, out of his mouth, it's like it's gonna be like fire, just a rapid fire, rapid fire, scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. Amen. I can see this little boy spitting scripture out, scripture out. See, let me tell you about our Lord and Savior. 12 years old, 
he, he, he walked away from Joseph and Mary, right? Went inside the temple. The first thing he did, opened up the Bible. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. You know the scripture, right? In Isaiah, uh, uh, I think 61. And he began to read this verse. And it was marvel. It's like, oh, here's this little boy. You know what I'm saying? I see your son like that spitting these scriptures out. And people are like, oh, my God. This boy is so young. But listen, age don't determine how God's going to use you. Amen. So, Lord, I thank you. Ramashi, Koromoshi. Ramashi, I do a couple of more. We're gonna get, who got your communion? If you get ready, get your communion. Get your communion out. Amen. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Woman of God, I see your daughter. I see you laying hands on your daughter's stomach. She's purging up. Purging up anything that's not of the Father. Just get ready, woman of God, because deliverance is going to hit your home. Amen. And I see your daughter. I, I see you just doing spiritual CPR. Spiritual CPR. Rama. Rashe. Rusha. Rama. Rashiko. Ramashe. Jesus. Mm. I see her bent over. Anything that's not of God is coming out. Anything that's not of God has to come out in Jesus' name. It's coming out of her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, went to woman of God, the, the, the hen party, and I saw uh, this uh, 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 individual. I told I, I told uh, my friend, I said, this individual need to come because they're going to get delivered. Sure enough, everything God showed me, the person getting purging, I said, she, it, it came to pass. Amen. I see the same type of the vision for your child. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming out. It's coming out. It has to come out. Come out. Come out and oh, Ramashi. I, I just I'm stuck on this because listen, God is a, a, a deliverer God. He's a deliverer God. Amen. It, it, has, it has to come out. Mm-hmm. Look. One thing about God, amen, he hears the prayers of the saints. And when we begin to pray, and I, I know some of us living with demonized folks. Oh, my God. I, I know. I know how it feels. Trust me. But when you begin to pray, and when you have other people praying in agreement, and, and uh, the floodgates will eventually open up, amen, in Jesus. That stuff got to come out of that child, in Jesus' name, amen. And I, I'm just, I'm happy, amen. And listen. Mm-hmm. And listen, you know, there is a reason for your child, you know, uh, some industries like beauty, for example, you know, if you're sitting in somebody's chair, that can be your platform, your ministry platform. So I'm, I'm going to believe God that that can be your child's ministry platform when people come sit down in that chair. Amen. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hey, honey. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for your, your daughter. In Jesus' name. Um, a couple of things I see. I see um, covenant relationships. God is sending you like covenant relationships. Um, there's a scripture, a three strand cord is not easily broken covenant relationships. Amen. And then I also see like flower, like a, like a, a beautiful, a beautiful flower. Amen. And that's how you are to the father, a beautiful flower. Amen. God is building you up and never again, never again, were, were you allow someone to tear you down. Amen. Never again. The enemy thought he would try to come and tear up covenant relationships. The devil is a liar. Amen. I see strength in, in relationship, strength in, 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 in uh, more unity in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. Then I also see a refreshing uh, refiner's fire in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. If you can just lift your hands up for me, woman of God, I just feel led to Roshia, Ramashe. I'm just going to blow upon you. And receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Rama, shikoramashe. In Jesus' name, receive it. 
a refreshing, refreshing fire to come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we can get our communion, amen. If you have it, let's get it. We take it Monday through Friday. And I want to put the prayer line number up as well. You know, y'all may not see me on here a lot, but we're on the line. And I'm going to give a shout out to Prophetess Love. Amen. You know, she's been warned and laboring, you know, on the prayer line all last week. And I just thank God for a servant. Amen. Like the woman of God. But we pray six o'clock in the morning and you can join us at 6 a.m. in the morning. We're going to take communion again. Amen. We don't take it for granted. Amen. We we are remembering our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're back on the line again at noon. Amen. So, um, Father, we just thank you that we can take your holy communion as often as we want to in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just examine our hearts. He said, examine our hearts. At least we put judgment on ourselves. So, God, we just get the bread right now, which represents the body of Christ. Amen. We break the bread as an act of thanksgiving. We eat the bread today. Amen. And we get the juice. And the juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's power in the blood. And let's go ahead and drink the juice. Amen. And we just thank God. Amen. We are washed over in the blood. Amen. We're washed over in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have a, a prayer request, you can put that up. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get into the worship service and our giving. Then I'm going to take a couple of prayer requests and I'm going to wrap this up. Amen. We've already been on here for two hours. And look, my hair done sweated out. You know, I'm I'm dressed in sweat like I done ran, ran, ran. That's how I feel like I don't feel like I don't worked out. My God. But um, if you feel led to sow into the ministry, you can go to my website. Um, website prophetisk.org. You can go to my uh, cash app, which is dollar sign prophet Kimberly Moses, or my PayPal, paypal.me forward slash free mag, um, or my Venmo, Kimberly Moses 19. And, with, and just name your seed, and then name it like resurrection seed, or just name your seed. And let me pray over the seeds. Father, you said, as we give, it shall be given back to us good measure. Press down. Shaking together, running over, shall men pour into our bosom. So, God, I ask you to bless the seeds. You love a cheerful giver, Father. And, God, we just thank you, Father, God, that, Lord, as we, we sow, God, we will yield an abundant harvest. Because, God, you are the Lord of the harvest. So, God, bless our seed. Honor our seed, God. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Blessing over the, blessings over the seeds in Jesus' name. All right. Somebody said they're crying uncontrollably. Amen. Whew, okay. Give me you. <clears throat> I'm trying to sing this. Everything else can wait. Thank you, God. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. God, we thank you. Lord, give me you. God, we thank you. Lord, give me you. God, we thank you for a prophetess. Oh, God, I thank you. I, I got, look, I got to go blow my nose. That's the truth. But I'm going to still prophesy. I'm going to stay on here as long as I can. Amen. Before my sinuses start draining. Because listen, being underneath God's presence, I'm getting healed. I was sick in my body. Um, I think I only coughed like one time since I've been on here. But um, I've been sick for the last two days. But I can testify I feel a thousand times better just in his presence. Amen. His presence brings the healing that we need. His presence gives us the strength that we need. Amen. And I ain't coughed but that one time. And I thank God for who I thank God. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. God, we thank you for the woman of God. Rama, Rishia, Roshia, Rama, Shiko, Romashi, Karamashi, Rama, Shiko, Romoshi. Woman of God, when I look at you, woman of God, this is what I see. Mm. I see um, a stronger grace coming upon you. Amen. And the God that you know in private is the God that's going to show himself publicly. When I see you standing up, woman of God, to teach, to preach, is people are not going to be able to, they're going to get overwhelmed with the glory. And then when I, I also see like a, 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 a this crazy, like strong deliverance anointing where like you'll you'll see this the, the enemy, you'll see the demon, you'll taste it. I know it's weird, you'll you, you taste it, but it is it's 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 a strong deliverance anointing, amen. That's coming upon you, amen. Like woman of God, there is a well. If you prophetess, um, if you could lay a hand on your belly, amen. There is a well out, coming out of you 
like a oh like a Russia Ramashe Ramashe God we just thank you for the well God Ramashe it's it's the birth and well it's the birth and well because God said he has more for you more for you there has been a little bit of challenges and hiccups that will try to uh prevent you know from doing certain things um but it's a well that's breaking forth uh, sparking revival. This is a well breaking for for breakthrough. This is a well breaking for for a major deliverance, not only in your body, but for those that 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 God will have you to cross paths with. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for the travail. We thank you, God, for the well. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Mm. He says, get ready for the seminar. He says, get ready for the seminar. God, we thank you for the seminar. We thank you, God, for the opportunities, God, to, to teach God, the opportunities, God, to, 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 um, to teach and to equip your folks in Jesus' name, your, your people in, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you, Father. Oh, God, we lift up the woman of God. We thank you, God, for... Um, her body, her, her her baby. We thank you, God, for her 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 her, her business. God, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just some things, Amen, woman of God. Um, I'm seeing your your um, husband right now. You're about to be blown away, woman of God. Um, just how God is going to just begin to do uh, some things inside of him that's literally going to blow you away, some things you've been praying for that's literally going to blow you away. And God, we just thank you right now for um, just touching the man of God and just doing a work in the name of Jesus. And I don't know the last time you guys went on a family vacation, but one is coming up really soon. Amen. Um, um, as soon as you're able. And God, we just thank you, Father, Father for that in Jesus' name, a time of bonding and uh, and we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you. And it, it, God is so strategic, woman of God. Not only do I see the vacation for the family, but I also see like more Bible studies in the home, more reading the Bibles together. Even, even the children getting involved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Father. Oh, God, we pray right now for Shekinah glory. God, precious gift, uh, heal. Uh, Father, we thank you, Father God, for... A unity god for them in jesus name we thank you father all is well in the name of jesus hallelujah and when i look at you i feel like there's some people around you that was trying to play games there's some people around you that um just listen some we, we, we cannot be um i'm trying to say this in the uh help me lord get this out of my mouth god like some people just come as a distraction some people come to this, this, this is what it is. This to distract us, really. And there's some people that God would just lead you to not even entertain, really, just to say, you know what, this is just distraction, because you know there's an assignment that you have to do. There's an assignment that God is dealing with you to do, Amen. And it's going to take great focus, and I just speak focus upon you in Jesus' name. One thing God has taught me is just the push past it. It's distractions are many. When I say distractions are many, many, many. But he has given me focus to get it done. Amen. And let me say this. For those that did register for this event, you know, I do have an ebook to send you. And I will send you the ebook this week. Amen. So thank you for registering in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there a prayer request for me on here? Amen. And we're getting ready to wrap this up. Uh, is there anybody got a prayer request for me? Amen. Now I bless you, Loretta. I speak blessings over you. Um, Letitia. God, I'm praying right now. Amen, Father. Mm. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. God, thank you. Whew, gosh. Jesus. Bear with me, you guys. I'm trying to get myself together. Whoo. Woman of God, when I look at you, there is uh, an anointing, like as a resurrection, I want to prophesy resurrection anointing to resurrect some things that's been stagnant, to resurrect some things that's been on the shelf, to resurrect some things, amen, 
that didn't seem to take off. Amen. God's going to have you revisit those things and have you to pull those things off the shelf and have you to revisit those things and begin. It's like his spirit's going to breathe on it again. It's like his spirit's going to breathe on it again. And this is going to gain traction. It's going to be getting to come back full force. And it's going to be the Lord's doing, not our doing, but it's going to be the Lord's doing. And God, we thank you. Jesus name. Woman of God, there's going to be some things God's going to reveal to you in dreams. I see you getting the names of your enemies. You're going to get the faces of your enemies. Amen. And God's going to even show you, amen, exactly what that enemy's doing. You, you already got the heads up over the enemy. Uh-huh. In Jesus name. And God, we thank you, Father, in Jesus name that she... The, the battle's already won, woman of God. Amen. The battle's already won in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Father. Uh, I didn't even look at the request. God, we thank you for expansion for her, her business, her clients, uh, her husband's business in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, as far as your husband, he's about to, I don't know if he had it yet, uh, a, a, a contract with the city, but he's going to have a contract with the city. Amen. Like the... The city, the city is going to put him in demand. Amen. The city needs his services. So I thank you, Father God, for divine connections with the community, the divine connections with the city in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm. God, we thank you, Father God. It's a new car. God, do it. Do it. We thank you, God, for a new car. I, I just, I just want to testify again because I know if I testify, God would do it. There was times when the first time I got a car, I needed a car. Um, I think it was like 2000, maybe um, 18 or probably 2018. I needed a new car because I had this little black um, car. I forgot the name of the car. It's a common car, um, but the battery would die and I would do videos. I remember I used to live in Effingham, South Carolina on like this little farm. Where I had cows and stuff in my backyard and I had no internet reception. So I had to drive to the city I live in Florence and park in front of a McDonald's or park in front of front of an Aldi's. And I would come on here and do videos. And then when I get off the camera, my, my car died. And I would have to go into Aldi's and ask the cashier, can you check my car for me? And I got tired of doing that, right? And I would buy, I, I brought myself a little, uh, what is it, a jump starter to jump my own car. But then it, it stopped working, it was horrible. And I, I got like three batteries. So the first time I got the white, I got a white, I think Chevy Traverse and at the time, my credit was like in the low 500s, the low five. I had no credit at all. And God said, go down. He said, in seven days, you'll get a new car. And I did. And it wasn't a new car, but it was a it was a pretty decent car at the time, you know. And I got that car. Then then um, I got, went through something with the Chevy Traverse. It, I spent like $10,000 on that car because it kept breaking down. And I didn't think I could um, get a new car. But God said, you can get a new car. So I went down to the Honda dealership. And they said, what car do you want? I was like, okay. So I got the car that I wanted, right? So I just believe God with you. I'm believing God that you're going to get your car in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever car you want. Amen. I touch and agree that you'll get your car in Jesus' mighty name. God did it for me. He could do it for you in Jesus' name. God, I pray right now for Precious. I pray that she will start her career and finish her book in Jesus' name. It's already done. I pray for success. God, the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And God, we touch and agree. Come on, we touch and agree for Maryland, her family salvation. And God, we know that you can save families. God, I have seen you save my sister to my daddy, to me, God. You can save people. God, we pray for Edgard, Father. We come against sharp pains in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, we pray right now, Father. Uh, we pray right now for Sandra Ross's mother to be healed. In her body, we come against death, premature death. We speak of healing in her body. We, we command our heartbeat to increase, the blood flow, the oxygenation to increase in our heart in Jesus' name, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God. We pray for Annette, her hands to circulate, with the circulation good in Jesus' name. Amen. And God, we pray right now that Mary, Miriam is healed as well in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I pray you guys enjoy this three day revival. Amen. That something said today. It bless your life. Amen. Remember, go out there and testify. Make sure your motives are right for doing it. Amen. 
Um, I thank God for what he has done. Amen. If you can tag somebody, share. Amen. I pray that my transparency helps somebody. Amen. I feel a thousand times better in my body. I, I, I'm so happy I, I obey God and you guys. Amen. And I'm touching the, we're touching the green, increase our ejection fraction in Jesus' name. Amen. So you guys have a great night. Until next time, we'll see you soon. God bless you, everyone.